So, uh, Sean, I was interested in, you've said you were you wanted to make a foreign film. What um, freedoms did you find in that? Um, creatively, I suppose, more than anything else. I was just, I couldn't, um, I didn't want to see myself sort of just directing another sort of English language, British film, and, and I just wanted to do something a little bit more exotic. And, and I love world cinema, and so the challenge of trying to make a film not in a language that you speak, a subtitled movie, was like an interesting challenge. And... It, the film was very much designed as a subtitled movie, mm -hmm. even to a point that I think um, a lot of um, foreign films get subtitled after they're edited. But we we were very aware that this was going to get subtitled while we were editing, and it made it made some of our choices during the edit quite interesting because mm. you know the timing of what you were seeing and knowing that people then would be reading. So um, it was a factor that we sort of designed into the edit. So it's kind of an interesting creative process. Right, and I understand too, like um, shooting the film in a language you don't speak yeah. meant that you didn't have to focus on line delivery. It, it opened up um, the ability to focus on, on other matters. What did you take away from this film that you think now you'll focus more on in your other films? Um, I, I, I think definitely, um, you know, language is sort of 60% nonverbal. And so mm. if you cannot get tied up on a certain word or the way it's been delivered, which you can do if it's in your own language, and you see past that and you see the actual uh, core acting of the physical side of it from the from the actor mm -hmm. and it's a much more uh, liberating um, experience in that respect because you you get to see what's going on yeah. behind what's being said and, and that adds another layer yeah, yeah. of depth you yeah know? And we spoke a lot about what we would try to pare a lot of stuff down because instead of doing lots and lots of like dialogue that we would need to subtitle I mean, yeah. Me and Jake were talking about what could we lose and say physically mm. and still get the same thing across. Right, right. because, uh, Jake, I've, I've read Sean has praised you for your ability to show emotion through your eyes uh, throughout this film. Um, was that something you were conscious of or something you, you brought with you? Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> my background was with theatre, but I've always been... Uh, uh, growing up in the Philippines, uh, hmm. that, uh, when you watch a lot of soap operas, you know that uh, they they overdo stuff, and I I know that there's a way uh, to, to just the cam you cannot lie in front uh, that the camera doesn't lie. Hmm. You just go for your intention and your action, and your eyes will speak to it. So I will 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 go to your objective, and the, the camera will pick it up. And I know that's one of the things that I really like about cinema is that you just know your intention and, you know, the, the camera picks it up. So sure. I had that in my mind, yeah. And as far as shooting, I understand you gave you gave up on location scouting because the traffic was just so horrific, you couldn't get anywhere. What effect did that have when you were shooting scenes, when you just see a location, pull over, set up for the day? Did that? Do you feel that added any kind of uh, authenticness to the film? Um, yeah, I think it definitely kept the energy up and, and um, you know, uh, the Philippines is so rich and, and uh, energetic, it didn't matter where you went, every every place was amazing. And then um, yeah. then trying to get like permissions for those places was kind of like it was just so long-winded and ultimately the whole theory was that we could probably just rock up and get out of a van and shoot the scene wherever we wanted yeah. and probably get it done before we got moved on. So that was kind of how we approached everything yeah. after a while. You'd be driving and say, hey, I like that, I like that, can we move it? Yeah, 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 so we yeah. would stop and we would block the scene and then then shoot it. Yeah. And then there was other times where like, you know, getting into banks was really difficult, you yeah. know, and it was a lot of red tape and, and we were running out of time and we didn't really have a lot of that much time. So we would, I would follow Jake into banks with the camera and, mm -hmm. and then I would wonder what we were doing there because I hadn't scheduled any deliveries and then we were like, no, we've got it, thanks very much. And then <laughs> out and then rush all these bank tellers were like scratching their heads looking at what those guys do. And how's that for you, Jake? Because that mean you had to be, I imagine that means you had to be on your toes at all time, ready to uh, ready to go? Yeah, all the time, yeah. Mm. Just just whatever the just shot we had planned for the day. And uh, yeah, emotionally and physically ready. As as a as an actor, yeah. I think that's I think that I think that works in in more in the favor of actors because yeah. filmmaking generally is like waiting around so much much of the day before you can actually then go and do something. That's Whereas right. this was very much like we were we were doing sort of I think we were getting about. 
three three hours of footage a day. It was really mm. a, a lot of wow. camera time that was moving. Mm. Yeah, and he's a sort of director that if he's not happy about it, just ask one more, one more until he gets you really, you know, being not thinking anymore and just got your objective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, everyone's going to take away their own uh, feeling and opinion of the film, but for you gentlemen, is this film ultimately a story of hope or desperation? Hope for me. Mm. I think it's a love story. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a love story. I, do, I mean, I, I, you love know, story. I think Oscar's a character who's, who's um, a very noble and uh, intelligent and, and um, unjaded uh, man and, and somebody that I sort of look up to and think, oh, I wish I was a bit more like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we wish we were that person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but I think, I think, you know, his, uh, you know, his sacrifice and his willing to, you know, support and save his family is uh, such a noble uh, cause and, and I think you can't help but root for him. And, uh, mm. and I, so I think, yeah, I think it's a hopeful, a very hopeful story in that sense. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank Wonderful. You. Cheers. Thanks, thank guys. You.